Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Oxhorn and today we have a lighthearted video about the Edotronic and the Porta Diner. Two interesting vending machines aside from Nuka-Cola machines that you can find in Fallout 4. Where did they come from? Who made them? Well, details are scant, but I'll do my best to go through the evidence that we find in the game. We first discover the Edotronic in Fallout 3, where it's called the Edotronic 5000. The version in Fallout 3 is much different from the one we find in Fallout 4. It has a more squarish, blocky appearance, and the door on the front actually slides up like a garage door instead of flipping open, like the one that we find in Fallout 4. On the lower left-hand corner, we find a number pad. I suppose this is where we punch in the number of the item that we want. And in the lower right-hand corner, we find a warning to keep our hands away from the moving door. And that's about it. I'm really bummed that we didn't find a manufacturer on this container, because that would tell us who made them. Was it Robco? General Atomics? We don't know, because the game doesn't say, and we don't find any terminal entries in the game that talk about who made the Eudotronic or the Porta Diner. But we can make some educated guesses, and mine would be that the Nuka-Cola company is most likely responsible for the Eudotronic. Large corporations tend to own other brands that are similar to what they do. Nuka-Cola already dominates the soda industry with smaller competitors like Vim and Sunset Sarsaparilla, and they would likely invest in other ways to sell portable food. The Nuka-Cola machines are already vending machines of a type, so my bet is that the Nuka-Cola company produced the Edotronic, or at least owns the company that made the Edotronic to try and corner the vended food and beverages market. Now the version you find in Fallout 3 actually has a greater variety of things inside of it. You often find boxed and packaged food like Blamco mac and cheese or Instamash. You often find sugar bombs, but you can even find things like cigarettes, beer, and even weapons. The Edotronic makes an appearance in Fallout New Vegas too. But what's interesting about this is that it's gone from being the Edotronic 5000 to the Edotronic 3000. But Bethesda didn't change the texture or mesh of the Edotronic model. The model still says Edotronic 5000 on it, even though when you hover over it, it says Edotronic 3000. Why they would make this change boggles the mind. There is no reason to change it from 5000 to 3000 between Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, but if it was a typo, you'd think that it's such a small and simple thing that they would have gone and changed it. So I can't explain why the West Coast version is 3000 and the East Coast version is 5000. In Fallout 4, the number is gone completely. It's simply called the Edotronic, and the way it works has changed as well. It now has a less blocky appearance and has more sexy curves. It looks a lot better. The door also functions differently. Instead of going up like a garage door, each shelf is in an enclosed glass case with a lid, which you can lift up to access the items. Like the version in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, the Edotronic has very little text on it. The Fallout 4 version simply has a place to insert coins and then a button to get the food. The Fallout 4 version also has far less variety of items that you can find inside of it. You almost always find moldy food, if anything at all. Sometimes you'll find some boxed foods, like in Far Harbor you can find some Dandy Boy apples and some Fancy Lad snack cakes. And there's one in the Mechanist's Lair that actually gives you a perfectly preserved pie. But aside from those, almost every single one in the game just gives you moldy food, which is not very interesting. But this is apparently intentional. If you look at the art of Fallout 4, you see the new design, which looks really nice, and you see the new door mechanism, distinct from the garage door mechanism we know from 3 and New Vegas, and then of course a big plate of moldy food. Now this would make sense if the Edotronics had never been opened since the war began. Like, if these Edotronics have been closed for 200 years, then yeah, we would find moldy, rotted food, if anything at all. But I always thought that it was much more likely that raiders, scavengers, and travelers would use these Edotronics as temporary storage places. Maybe to save something for themselves at a later date, or just to get rid of stuff if they don't find a trash can nearby. I always thought that the items in Fallout 3 in New Vegas had been put there 
recently by people who had been living in the world. That's why we find cigarettes and an assault rifle in the Edotronics. But in Fallout 4, apparently they've been closed for 200 years. Now the Porta Diner is a cool little gadget that has the same wonderful curves as the Edotronic. The art design for these vending machines is superb. This vending machine is entirely different. It actually acts kind of like one of those claw mini games that you find at the fair or inside arcades. The way it works is you go up to the Porta Diner, activate it, and then a claw will go down and try to pick a perfectly preserved pie from the top of the food stack. Now there is a bunch of moldy, rotten food all around the perfectly preserved pie, so I suppose we can assume that maybe there's some sort of preservative inside the pie that has kept it fresh these past 200 years. But every single machine you find in the game is broken. The chance of actually getting a perfectly preserved pie is really, really low. I got my first success when I used the Porta Diner inside the Nuka World Junkyard Warehouse. Apparently this one is the only one that has a 100% chance of successfully getting the pie. I've been able to successfully get it on every character whom I've taken to the junkyard. The claw comes down, picks up the pie, brings it to the container, and then you actually have to open the tray like a container to loot the pie. The door doesn't open up on its own, you have to open it yourself. The way this thing worked is you punch in the number of the food item that you want in the number pad, insert your coins, it is coin operated, and then press go. The hand would move around and find the item that you want. But it looks like all of the Porta Diners after the war are stuck on one position, the one plate at the top of the stack. The diner also has a trash bin in the bottom right hand portion of it when you face it. But like the Edotronic, the Porta Diner doesn't have any distinguishing marks. We don't see who made it, who manufactured it, so we can only presume that it's likely made by the same company that's responsible for the Edotronic, which is probably Nuka-Cola. You can increase the chance that you'll get a pie by increasing your luck. And after all that trouble, the pie itself is less than interesting. It restores 30 hit points. That's it. But hey, at least it doesn't give you rads. Clever players have decompiled the luck algorithm that dictates how many attempts it takes to get the perfectly preserved pie. Even if your luck is 10, you only have a 2% chance of obtaining the pie on your first attempt. Because the formula goes, your chance equals luck times two, plus the number of times you try to get the pie times 0.5 divided by 10. This means that the only way to get a 100% chance of getting the pie is to try 2,000 times. With only one luck, you have a 99% chance of getting the pie at your 130th attempt. With 10 luck, you get a 99% chance of looting the pie at your 100th attempt. And with 15 luck, you get a 99% chance of looting the pie at your 87th attempt. Many thanks to Fallout Wikia for running those numbers for me. But remember, you can always just go to the Porta Diner found in the Nuka World Junkyard for a 100% chance every time. Alternatively, you can go to Cappy's Cafe inside Nuka World, where you'll find two slices of the pie lying on the counter inside the cafe. These are not in the Porta Diner, they're just lying on the counter. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the full story of the Edotronic and the Porta Diner. That's about all the information we have on it. Admittedly, it's a bit of speculation trying to understand who's responsible for those two very interesting pre-war food dispensing machines. It's small, nearly insignificant stuff like this that really helps sell the world of Fallout 4. Even though the perfectly preserved pie doesn't have any real battle function, it's still a neat little thing to have in the world, and if you use a mod like OC Decorator, it's great for decorating up your settlements. Do you like short videos like this where we take a look at some of the technology or the items in the game? Do you have suggestions about devices, widgets, or doodads that you'd like me to talk about next? Let me know in the comment section below. I read all of the comments you guys leave on my videos, and I use them as inspiration for future videos. If you'd like to join the Oxhorn community on Discord, check out the invitation link that I've included in the description of this video. And if you'd like to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. 
Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.